my name is Urban Rosenfeld, and I am the longest surviving federal medical marijuana patient in the United States. There are five patients currently in the country, and that will only be five because Bush administration shut the program down in 92. I have a severe bone disorder called multiple congenital cartilaginous exocytosis and a variant of syndrome pseudo pseudo hypoparathyroidism. Now, this causes bone tumors to grow outwardly all throughout my body, growing into the muscles and the veins. As a teenager, I had many operations. I was using all kinds of drugs, and I was an advocate against marijuana in the late 60s. Why would a healthy patient, a healthy person, use an illegal drug when here I would hold up my baggie with all the prescriptions and say, look at me, look what I have to take. Be thankful you're healthy. Went to college in Miami in 71, and there, uh, because of peer pressure, I tried marijuana. And it did nothing to me. I didn't get high, it did nothing. People around me were getting high, I thought they were self-inducing it. About the tenth time I did it, I sat and played a game of chess for 30 minutes, and I hate chess. And you see, I have trouble sitting. And I sat for 30 minutes, it was the first time in five years I did that. Now, I had morphine, I had quaalude, I had valium, eating the prescription I had it prescribed. And it dawned on me, I hadn't taken a pill for like six hours. Well, then why could I sit for the first time in five years? And then they passed me the garbage, marijuana. To me, that's all it was, pure garbage. That's the only thing I did differently, was this garbage. Well, I've got an analytical mind. My family's in medicine. My great uncle was head of pediatrics at Johns Hopkins. My uncle taught pediatrics at Yale. My sister was head of nuclear medicine at Duke. Here's the garbage that might have medical bad value. So we researched it. And lo and behold, guess what? Marijuana was used in this country from 1860 to 1937. It was manufactured by Eli Lilly, Merck, all the major pharmaceutical companies. It was used for myriad of disorders, prevalently for muscle relaxant, anti-inflammatory, and for pain. I said, voila, that's just what it's doing for me, and I'm not getting high from it. I've got to have this. Well, the federal government outlawed it. Well, then you mean I have to take on the federal government to get the medicine I need? My doctor can prescribe morphine to me, but he can't give me marijuana? Well, that's the way it is. So that's what I did, because I don't like being labeled a criminal. So I took on the federal government. That case took me 10 years, but 1982, I won. And I am now using this medicine legally under the federal government, but now starting my 25th year. I've used marijuana, 10 to 12 marijuana cigarettes a day, for 35 years. Now, I've married. I've been married for 33 years. I'm a stockbroker. I handle millions of dollars on a daily basis. All my clients know that I use medical cannabis. They applaud the fact that I took time off from work to come here and, and hopefully educate the people in Michigan. That this is not the hysteria people make it out to be. Now, you ask, has FDA done any studies? Well, they've given me this marijuana for 25 years almost. Have they done any studies on me? No because they don't want to know how well it works. Myself and three of the other federal patients had a complete evaluation done privately in Montana five years ago. They did brainwave testing, IQ testing, respiratory, blood work, you name it. We tried to look at everything aspect to see what harm this would cause us. Because again, when you have a debilitating disease that you didn't ask for, we did believe what the government's rhetoric was saying. This could harm us. But we've harmed so much to begin with, but the benefits would outweigh, would outweigh any harm. <coughs> Well, so we did this testing, assuming that we find some, some problems. Well, guess what? All four of us were just perfectly fine. So now the federal government says, well, you know, you're an anomaly. You're the only four people in the government, in the country, that, government, that marijuana wouldn't harm, but anyone else would harm. <laughs> well, you know something? That's just not the case. They don't want to debate us. They don't want to study us. They don't want to know, and that's sad, because there are people in this country that are sick and didn't ask for it. They didn't wake up in the morning and your brother didn't wake up and say, well, you know, if I could just catch AIDS, then maybe I could use marijuana to take away nausea from my chemotherapy for the AIDS uh, waste and waste syndrome. Or somebody says, if I could just get cancer, then doing the chemotherapy, I could get marijuana and take away the nausea. Nobody asked for it. They, they also don't ask to be labeled a criminal. And that's what's happening in this country. That's what's happening. So what's this? Is, I'm legal, okay? I can go anywhere in the United States and U.S. territories, and I am not breaking any law. I'm a federal patient. I'm using marijuana. I'm legal. But that woman? I don't know. She's a criminal. Per your state law, she's using marijuana. She is breaking your state law. She is a criminal. Okay? She should be locked up and put behind bars. I don't know about you, but I should sleep better at night knowing she's locked up behind bars. <laughs> Wouldn't you? See, that's, that's the problem that we have here. It's an hysteria. It's people being scared. Okay, it's not a harmful substance. Marijuana is one of the most benign substances known to mankind. We had FDA, we had DEA hearings for two years, from 1986 to 1988. Judge Francis Young, their own DEA law review judge, did these hearings, which I thought was biased, but picking their own judge. He took one year to make his decision after the hearings. 
His decision was it was one of the most benign substances to mankind, and it should be made Schedule II, along with morphine, along with cocaine, meaning it had medicinal value, but could be potentially harmful. Well, what did DEA do after two years of hearing from all the people on one side and all the people on the other with this decision? They said, we don't like that decision. And they got rid of him, and he died in disgrace. So the government does not want to know. The federal government does not want to know. They're not going to do anything about this subject. So what each state has to do, which is, I'm really sad because it's a federal program. The government grows this marijuana for me on the campus of the University of Mississippi. Your tax money pays for this, and I appreciate it. <laughs> but it, it's, it's a medicine. I go to a pharmacy, I pick up my tin can, 11 ounces of marijuana, I smoke every 25 days. 11 ounces every 25 days with no euphoric effect. No ill effect. My lungs, my lung capacity was 108 percent of normal. Okay, I go and pick up as a prescription. That's the way I think it should be. I mean, people shouldn't have to grow their own. These states in California doing all this. No, I'm against it. However, I'm in favor of getting medicine to the patients. That's the most important aspect. And if that's the only way that they're going to pass laws, and the federal government's not going to enact a federal policy so other people can pick up as a prescription, well, if they're not going to do that, the, the states are left up on their own. They've got to do what they can. Take the crime away from your sick patients. There's no need prosecuting people who are sick. And it's wasting, wasting your, your resources, putting people in jail. I mean, I, I know myself in, in, in Florida, we have overcrowding. Well, they arrest a nonviolent criminal, they may be putting that person in jail and, and letting out a violent criminal. And all because of a weed that's been around for generations and centuries and centuries. And yes, nobody ever has died off of marijuana. Now, every drug that's approved by FDA and goes through all their you know, rulings and all their studies and everything, every drug has a, it's called an and something or other. It says if you take this much of it, you die. Okay, aspirin, everything. If you take this much of it, you die. That period. There's never been one that says for marijuana because no one's ever died off of it. No one's ever gotten lung cancer off of it. Dr. Tashkin, a government doctor, is the main doctor in the country for research for, the, for you know, bad things with marijuana. Well, he just came out with a study, that was a 10-year study that said, go to California, that he could not find one patient that had lung cancer due to marijuana. That he found lots of lung cases due to cigarettes, and what he also couldn't explain was that people that smoked marijuana along with using cigarettes had less uh, cases of cancer. But he wasn't sure why. So the point being is this. this I'm, I'm the living subject. I'm the proof. Okay, people can stand up here, the government can stand up here and say how bad it is. Other people can stand up here and say how good it is. I can stand up here and say, I use it. I've used it for 35 years. Over 24 years, I just started my 25th year, November 20, under this medicine. I'm a productive member of society. I'm married for 33 years. I have no children because I can pass down this disease and I wanted to do that. I teach disabled people how to sail in Miami. Okay, it was an organization called Shake a Leg. So I'm a very productive member of society because I have the right medicine. I don't take morphine. I don't take anything. I haven't taken any other drugs now for 19 years. All I use is medical cannabis. So what does this mean to me? Without this medicine, if I were still alive, most likely I would have died of hemorrhages or something like that, or cancer won't, but the tumors won't be malignant. Uh, I would not be, be a productive member of society. If I was still alive, I'd probably be hung down on disability. And that's not what I want to be. Now, God made it to where I was fortunate enough to have the intelligence, the chutzpah, to take on the government. And God's, and God's made it to where, you know, everyone is still alive, and you still got to help others. So that's why I left work in Fort Lauderdale yesterday. Flew here and fly back tonight and be back at work bright and early tomorrow morning. I thank you all very much.